According to the Social Security Administration, millions of women, far more than men, depend on Social Security for nearly all of their income when they retire. <clears throat> and because women live longer on average, their savings accounts get squeezed at both ends. So the real question that we're going to pursue today is, is the Social Security safety net, which keeps 15 million older people, including 9 million women, from tumbling into poverty, is it strong enough? Are there holes in the safety net? Are there ideas that on a bipartisan basis this pursue to strengthen the economic hand of so many vulnerable older women? So we're going to kick this discussion into high gear now to look at how women can have greater financial uh, security. We've got an expert panel of witnesses who are going to shed light on several ways to strengthen uh, the safety net. <clears throat> One proposal that will be discussed <clears throat> is boosting the Social Security benefits for women who outlive their spouses. Another would give care, give her credits for individuals who leave their jobs to take care of children or disabled or elderly family members. And with those credits, caring for a loved one would no longer come at the cost of a reduced Social Security benefit later <clears throat> in life. Two other ideas are one that would close the gap between disabled widows or widowers and others who receive Social Security disability. That concept would look at <clears throat> ending benefit reductions, time limits, and other restrictions. And finally, there has been interest in revising student benefit rules and removing gender bias from Social Security so that couples and their kids, regardless of gender, could get equal benefits. Thank you, Chairman Wyden and Ranking Member Hatch for the opportunity to testify here today. 32 years ago, the National Committee was created by Congressman James Roosevelt the son of President Franklin Roosevelt and First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt. Through the years, we have focused on protecting their greatest achievement, Social Security. And now, it's in the spirit of our Roosevelt heritage that Eleanor's work on women's issues that we've launched Ele Eleanor Roosevelt's Hope, an initiative to focus greater attention on women's retirement issues. While women have come a long way since Eleanor's day, several inequalities continue to threaten our important retirement security. For example, women have been and continue to be subjected to persistent gender wage discrimination leading to smaller social security benefits, as you've mentioned. Women often give up jobs and paychecks to care for children and elderly parents, and this leads to reductions in their social security benefits. Women are less likely to have a pension, and even if they do have a pension income, it's usually less than what men receive. Women live longer than men and consequently are more likely to outlive their retirement savings. A growing number of older women rely on Social Security for all or most of their income reti in retirement. Without Social Security, over half of these women would be living in poverty. Even with Social Security, 11% of older women still live in poverty. For widows, the poverty rate is worse at 15%, which is 50% higher than the poverty rate for all people 65 or older. Although Social Security is gender neutral, life is not. Women pay the price of that inequity as long as they live. As a result of lower lifetime earnings, the average monthly Social Security benefit of a retired woman in 2012 was $1,103, while the average monthly benefit of a retired man was $1,417. These facts led the National Committee's decision to prioritize the Eleanor's Hope vision of retirement equity through supporting legislation that rights the economic wrongs threatening millions of retired women. To that end, we support several proposals that would improve benefit equity for women, which are explained in my written testimony, and I'd like to highlight a few of our recommendations. First, we support improving Social Security survivor benefits because it would treat one earner and two earner couples more fairly and will reduce the likelihood that's of survivors falling into poverty. We believe Social Security credit should be given to caregivers who must leave the workforce to care for children and elderly family members. We propose that future cost of living adjustments be based on a fully developed consumer price index for the elderly, or CPIE. The CPIE would more accurately measure the rising prices of goods and services 
paid by seniors rather than the current urban and clerical worker index does. Seniors age 85 or older, and women in particular, are more likely to be financially vulnerable even with Social Security. To ensure additional security, we support a benefit bump up for all beneficiaries who, 20 years after retirement. To make these important proposals affordable, the National Committee supports strengthening the financing of the Social Security program by eliminating the cap on the Social Security payroll contributions. Mr. Chairman, Three decades of stagnant middle class wages and eroding retirement benefits are threatening to put millions of retirees on a highway to hardship. Women are more on a more troubling road because we face this retirement crisis and bear the burden of economic in inequality. The proposals I've discussed today will address social security inequality for women and help to ensure a livable retirement for more Americans. We applaud Senators Tom Harkin Mark Begich and Patty Murray and other members who have introduced many of these proposals as legislation. Eleanor Roosevelt devoted, devoted 40 years to gender equality by advancing women politically, economically, and socially. To continue the work she started, I urge the Finance Committee to approve legislation that will ensure women have as much protection against re retirement, disability, and survivorship risks as men do. Thank you for the opportunity to testify today.